In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate the ATR, or the average true range. The average true range is a technical indicator that measures volatility. So when the volatility is high, the ATR will be high. When the volatility is low, ATR is low as well. The first thing you need to do is calculate the true range. And there's three formulas that will help you to do so. The first one is to take the current high and subtract it by the current low. The second one is to take the absolute value of the current high minus the previous close. And the third formula is to take the current low and subtract it by the previous close. So whichever of these three values is the greatest, that's going to be the true range for that day. So once you have the true range for that day, you need to determine the average true range, which is going to be the sum of the true ranges. It could be for a 14-day period, a 5-day period, and divided by the number of days in the time period. So let's talk about how to calculate this first with an example. So let's say that the low price for today is $22. And the high price of a stock, let's say that's 27. And the stock price closed at 25 on the previous day. So to calculate the true range, we need to use those three formulas. So the current high minus the current low that's 27 minus 22. So that would be $5. Now using the second formula, that's going to be the current high minus the previous close. That's 27 minus 25. So that's $2. And then using the third formula, it's going to be the current low minus the previous close and the current low is 22. 22 minus 25 is negative 3, but the absolute value of negative 3 is positive 3. So then we would choose the highest of these three values, and that is 5. So the true range for that day will be $5. So here's an example problem. Calculate the ATR, or the average true range, for the five-day period using the information shown below. So we need to calculate the true range for each day, and then calculate the average for those five days. So let's start with Monday. By the way, feel free to pause the video if you want to try this problem yourself. So first, we need to take the current high and subtract it by the current low. So that's going to be 36 minus 34, and that's going to give us $2. Next, we need to take the current high and subtract it by the previous close. So the current high is 36 minus the previous close of 33, so that will give us $3. Finally, we need to take the current low and subtract it by the previous close. So that's 34 minus 33, which is $1. So now looking at these three numbers, we need to highlight or select the greatest of those three. And that will be $3. That's larger than two or $1. So now we need to repeat the process for the other four days. So let's move on to Tuesday. So the current high minus the current low is going to be 39 minus 35 which is $4. The current high minus the previous close for Tuesday, that's 39 minus 36, so that's $3. And then the current low minus the previous close for Tuesday, so that's 35 minus 36, that's a negative one, but the absolute value of negative one is positive one. So selecting the highest, that's going to be the $4 value. Now let's move on to Wednesday. So H minus L 
that's 35 minus 32, that's $3. And then H minus the previous close. So 35 minus 39, that's a negative 4. But we're going to take the positive value for that. And then the current low minus the previous close for Wednesday, that's 32 minus 39. That's negative 7, but we're going to change that to positive 7. So the highest value for Wednesday, the greatest difference is 7. Now let's move on to Thursday. So the current high minus the current low, 43 minus 36, that's 7. Now the current high minus the previous close, 43 minus 33, that's going to be 10. And then the low minus the previous close, 36 minus 33, that's 3. I know this process can be quite tedious, but at least it teaches you how to calculate the average true range. So for Thursday, the highest value is $10. Now let's move on to Friday. So the current high minus the current low is going to be 37 minus 32, which is $5. And then we have the current high minus the previous close for Friday. That's 37 minus 39, negative 2. But let's make that positive 2. And then the low minus the previous close. So we have a low of 32. Previous close is 39. So that's a difference of 7. So the highest value for Friday is going to be 7. Now that we have the greatest range for, or rather the greatest true range for each of these five days. Now we can calculate the ATR, the average true range for the five day period. So we're going to add up all of the highlighted values. So for Monday, the highest range was three. For Tuesday, the highest range was four. For Wednesday, the highest range is seven. Thursday, it's 10. Friday, it's seven. So Thursday was the most volatile day. It had the highest range. So now since we analyzed this over a five day period, we're gonna divide the numbers by five. So we have three plus four plus seven plus 10 plus seven. So that's 31. 31 divided by five is $6.20. So that is the average true range for the five-day period. That's how you can calculate it. Consider the price charts of stock A on the left and stock B on the right. So we have price on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Now, both of these stocks are in an uptrend. If you were to draw a line, you could see that. Now, which of these two stocks would you say has a higher ATR value? The one on the left or the one on the right? The one on the left has a low average true range value, and the one on the right has a high average true range value. If you look at the spikes, the spikes are very small on the left side. That tells you that the daily price changes are minimal. Whereas for the graph on the right, the price fluctuates greatly each day. And because you have these huge price fluctuations, or rather these huge daily price fluctuations, the ATR value is going to be higher on the right side than on the left. So this stock will be considered a volatile stock because the price, it fluctuates greatly. This stock has low volatility the price fluctuations are very low. And so that's what the ATR tells you. It measures volatility in the price of the stock. And so a graph that looks like this would have a low ATR value, whereas a graph that looks like this will have a high ATR value. Consider the chart of stock XYZ. 
In this picture, I want you to identify all the regions of low volatility and high volatility. So let's focus on this part. Would you say the ATR value would be high or low? Since the volatility is low, the ATR value will be low in this region. In this section, volatility is high. So we would expect a high ATR value for that section. Over here, the volatility is low in this region. So the ATR value will be low. Here, the volatility is high. So that would correspond to a high ATR value. This region, this would be, it would have a low ATR value and that region would have a high ATR value. So notice that when the, the stock could be in an uptrend and the ATR could be either low or high, or the stock could be in a downtrend and the ATR could be low or high. So the ATR is an indicator that doesn't tell you the price direction of a stock. It doesn't tell you if it's an uptrend or a downtrend. What it does tell you is the volatility of a stock. It tells you how the stock prices changes on a daily basis on average. So here, the price of the stock doesn't change much. So the ATR will be low. Here, the daily price of the stock is changing a lot. So you would expect a high ATR value, which would mean high volatility. So that's it. So just to review, just remember the ATR is an indicator that measures volatility and not price direction.